Recording in progress. Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, I am the host of the today's Weather Dance Cross Chain Public Crosses. Uh, before the crosses is beginning, uh, I will introduce the Weather Dow and the Weather Dance Cross Chain Public Crosses. Weather Dow, based on the pure crypto concept, is a knowledge based and development decentralized automated organization that combines education and promotion, development and incubation investment and research. Weirdow is creating a public education and develop various open workshops. Currently, we have launched public courses on data science, blockchain concepts, cross-chain topics, and we will output more series of product and high quality content all the time. Within a diverse and thriving community ecosystem, it forms a self-governing commercial loop for opening for open governance uh, media in distribution and product development. Uh, we are very glad that our open courses has on the support and the co construction of more than 15, uh, 50 university media, uh, uh, 50 partners uh, supporting, including university media project projects, institution, organization, and also receive the support of many excellent cross chain projects like today, the other chain. Uh, we will upload the video of the cross in the future to YouTube and Bilibili. I hope that more and more people will pay attention to cross-chain technology and cross-chain fields. Uh, okay, I will introduce the cross-chain uh, cross uh, today. Uh, the cross-chain today is uh, uh, is invite uh, the other chains uh, Fed uh, Development Experience Manager. Uh, uh, Dennis Fadi to uh, to give a special lecture about uh, Zeta Chain. So Zeta Chain is the world's first and only decentralized EVM compatible layer one blockchain with built-in cross-chain inter interoperability, connecting all blockchains, even even no non-smart contact uh, contract uh, chains like Bitcoin and Dogecoin, with Zeta Chain's complete omnichain toolkit. Uh, developers can build true omnichain dApps from a single point of logic and user can access all of their assets, data, and liquidity in a single place securely. We are honored to have invited Danny Fadil, the head of the Edition develop Developer Experience, to give a special sharing. Uh, looking forward to everyone's interaction. Uh, okay, our class has officially started right now, and now I will hand it over to you. Thanks, sir. Uh, can you start right now? Hello, thank you for the intro. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. My name is Dennis, and I am uh, I'm going to present the Zeta Chain project. Um, you should see my screen right now with green background, the Zeta Chain logo in the center. So let's begin. So what is Zeta Chain? Zeta Chain is an EVM compatible L1 blockchain that is focused on interoperability. So the goal is to connect all the blockchains and give the developers the tooling to build cross-chain, omni-chain applications. So you, with Zeta Chain, you can connect to all the ones that don't support smart contracts. Such can manage all the assets from a single place, a single for an independent L1 blockchain based on the Cosmos tech. Um, it's it's using proof of stake. Um, it, well, it's a proof of stake blockchain, and essentially, it features uh, very fast block times, um, very modern tech stack, and um, it provides two ways of building dApps for developers. One is only chain contracts, Recording in progress. and the other one is cross chain messaging. So, with only chain contracts, what you can do is you can write a, a contract, for example, in Solidity, deploy it to Zeta Chain, and this contract essentially has 
superpowers to manage assets on all the connected chains. So you can let users move their um, ETH, for example, from Ethereum to um, to Bitcoin um, by by implementing the logic to swap ETH into Bitcoin, and it's all implemented without bridges, but rather on a decentralized blockchain. Cross-chain messaging is several chains, and you have ability messages from one chain to another. So it's a different paradigm. Sometimes it has more advantages, but it's it's just different, right? So data chain offers both. So why why is this important? So the more the more we kind of build out the the crypto uh, industry as a whole, the more we realize it's becoming more and more multi-chain, right? So it's not about which chain is going to be uh, the dominant one, um, but it's rather how are we going to connect all the chains? Because at this point, we all understand that the future is multi-chain. And now the question is, how do we how do we connect all of the things and make make this and abstract all of this away from the users so users don't have to understand everything in detail, right? Like how it works under the hood. So the way it has been progressing so far is um, new L1s kind of independent from each other, right? We have centralized exchanges which allow users to move assets between chains, but it's done in a centralized way, which is not ideal. We have a bunch of different bridges. We have um, aggregators, and we, we, we've seen uh, the more and more cross-chain messaging solutions, right? So that's that's where we are right now. Um, but the, the solutions that we've seen so far are not perfect, right? They are high risk. Uh, we've seen bridge exploits, um, and, and we've seen exploits in centralized solutions as well. And we, we still see fragmentation, right? So it's it's still separate chains and it, you kind of jump through hoops almost literally to, um, to, sh to send data between chains and assets, right? And there are a lot of restrictions to this, to this architecture. So when people think about interoperability, but typically either, either see it as a bridge, right? Or, um, have deploy on multiple blockchains and you have a drop down where you select which one you want to interact with. And it's all very often the tokens, which is not something you want because this not not necessarily what you want every time because this is introduces more risks, right? But what it can be is much more than that, right? We can kind of abstract the concept of networks to end users. We can build on top of this omni-chain idea where your contract essentially kind of spans between, spans across chains and it's not limited and it's not dependent on any centralized or risky bridge solutions, right? So you just build one contract and can uh, and it can access anything, uh, any any chain, um, and and move assets and, and do all sorts of cool things. Um, so. Interoperability benefits uh, developers as well as end users, right? You can um, ideally, from the developer experience point of view, we don't want developers to really reinvent the wheel and, and build um, build their own cross-chain solutions. We want to provide all the tooling for them to focus on the business side of their DAP, right? On the on the on the application specific logic. Um, and that's what Zeta Chain is is providing, right? We all, we also don't want for them to be locked into a specific ecosystem, right? The goal is to connect everything and kind of get get out of the way of developers. So that's where cross chain messaging and, and especially omni chain smart contracts come in, because we uh, we think that that this is the this is kind of the right way to to build dApps that are um, very uh, very well connected to all the all the, all the chains and expose very 
full API surface area, right? You don't need to implement much. And the concept is very simple. I'm going to go through the main concepts later, um, show how simple it, it is for developers. So the way it works under hood is Zeta Chain is a, is a decentralized blockchain, proof of stake blockchain. And we have these observed validators, right? We have regular validators that secure the network. Uh, which we are very familiar with with these sort of validators, right? But we also have observer validators. These validators are special because they also run nodes of all the connected chains. And what they do is they run an off-chain program that watches these nodes of connected chains. And when when it sees an event, it 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 votes on uh, a transaction on Zeta chain. So when you see a potential cross-chain transaction happening from Ethereum as an observer validator, you also you, you vote on this transaction on Zeta chain. And if enough votes are collected and a transaction is approved, then it gets processed by Zeta chain and potentially an outbound transaction is also created to send tokens to the destination chain. Not always, but sometimes that's that's the life cycle of the transaction. So observer observers watch connected chains for events. If they see something, they uh, vote on it on Zeta chain and an outbound transaction gets created. So this allows very interesting and complex solutions being built while maintaining a pretty simple architecture. So the way it works um, on Zeta chain is Zeta chain has liquidity pools for all the token it supports. And Zeta chain primarily deals with uh, native assets, right? I mean, unwrapped assets. So when you send token from Ethereum to Polygon, you're sending Ethereum, but you will get native matic and this is by design because at the end of the day like user want to get native assets instead of uh wrapped versions we reduced kind of this level of complexity and and um, introduce additional risk to the system so you tokens on on the on the destination chain of course it's not all about tokens and we'll cover that later as well with cross messaging. Uh, you can uh, send more data, and with omnichain contracts, you will be, you will be able to send more data as well um, in the future. So this is uh, in more detail how this how this works, right? We uh, we have a source chain in this example uh, is it's it's Bitcoin, and a user sends one BTC to a specific address on Bitcoin. So every connected chain has um, a spe special address, special Zeta chain address called TSS. And when a user sends tokens to this address, they also supply, they need to supply a memo. And the memo contains an address of the contract on the Zeta chain that will be called and all the arguments you want to pass to this contract. So in this example, it's a swap contract and the the first 20 bytes of the memo is the swap contract address on Zeta chain, and the rest is um, the other 20 bytes in this example. It's the destination token address. So we want to swap uh, BTC for Ethereum. So what, when when this process when this transaction gets processed by Zeta chain, what Zeta chain does is it it takes the first 20 bytes, finds the contract on Zeta chains on Zeta chain and calls it with the, the the second 20 bytes, right? Passes the destination token address. On Zeta chain, we have liquidity pools for all the tokens and the 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 token amount gets swapped for uh, Ethereum and for Zeta to cover the fees, but the rest is is swapped into um, into Ethereum and the native assets on Zeta chain are represented as something called ZRC20, right? So when you send one BTC to a TSS address, which you get is 
one ZRC20 BTC. And ZRC20 is just Zeta Chain's um, token format based on ERC that lets you operate on a uh, wrapped version of a token uh, when you when you're when you're processing the transaction, right? So you don't get wrapped tokens in the end, but in the meantime, you need a representation of the token on Zeta Chain so you can uh, operate on it, right? So what you get is um, at the end of this swap transaction, what you get is a ZRC20 version of ETH, and ZRC20 tokens allow you to withdraw them back to their original chain, in this case, Ethereum. And that's exactly what you should do. You get uh, native, native ETH and it's sent from the TSS address to the user address. So the TSS address is owned by a, val uh, by a set of validators. So it's, it's, uh, it's as secure. Uh, Zeta chain is secure, right? So it's very decentralized, um, and uh, as long as Zeta chain is um, functioning properly and it's secure, then then all the transactions are fine. And also, when you get your tokens, like they're no longer connected, they're not wrapped tokens, they're native tokens. So that's also a uh, peace of mind that users have. So I'm not going to go through all the advantages and disadvantages of different solutions, but Zeta Chain uh, definitely has a lot of uh, a lot going for it. Um, it's chain agnostic. It provides different ways of build depending on what you really need as a developer. It supports Bitcoin. Pretty much no other solution support, supports Bitcoin. And um, yeah, you you get get native tokens in the end, which is which is really cool. So some stats here, it's Zeta Chain is built on Cosmos, so it's very fast block time, instant finality. Um, you have thousands of transactions per second. The costs are very low. Zeta Chain is, you could say it's, it, it is an app specific chain in a way because it's focused on interoperability, but then again, that's also an ABM compatible chain. So everything you can build on Ethereum, you can uh, build and deploy on Zeta Chain as is. Uh, hundreds of validators, so it's, it can be very decentralized. We have millions of users on testnet, thousands of, of contracts deployed, um, thousands of developers, and um, yeah, very active. Um, so on the roadmap, we are currently in the final stages of the incentivized testnet. So uh, we've released Bitcoin support. Uh, well, it's been there for, for quite a long time, but um, support was was improved dramatically in the past couple of versions. And also, you know, we now support just native tokens, right? You can also swap uh, ERC-20 tokens and more available. <laughs> Uh, later on, as as the network matures, so that's that's a roadmap. Um, very exciting stuff. Uh, Zeta Chain is built for any kind of applications. You can build DeFi, you can build NFT applications, identity. We've seen interesting um, solutions for lending and borrowing, for um, uh, for on-chain identity, and um, of course you can build social apps and and, and anything else. Uh, really, because it's fully EVM compatible. Just app is multi-chain, and it probably should be at this point. Then you can really leverage Zeta, what Zeta Chain has to offer. So we have quite a few um, resources that you can look into if you're interested in building on Zeta Chain. I encourage you to check. Zay Labs, which is a testnet um, uh, swap functionality for end users, just so that they can try it out. Uh, of course, Zeta Chain is much more than just swapping. It's just one use case that uh, we decided to implement for the end users. But um, it's still pretty cool to, to experiment. Try it out yourself, swap some tokens. Um, we also have an explorer, of course. You can check it out. It's a very useful developer tool. And also, if you if you want to, uh, if you've made a transaction, you want to track it. Very convenient. We have uh, 
quite extensive library of documentation for developers tutorials. So for both for only chain contracts and cross chain messaging, you can check it out. It's pretty extensive and you can, um, you can start from zero take a weekend. So it's very easy to get started and it becomes even easier as we um, build, build out the, the, the system. So uh, if you're a developer, I strongly encourage you to check out um, our GitHub org with all the code there, um, both um, both everything like the, the templates, the example contracts, protocol contract, implement the functionality of Zeta Chain, as well as the node itself is um, they're all open source. So you can check it out and we're creating issues for hasn't been released yet, um, but it's 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 very cool. It, a UI for all the things available, all the things, but the most important bits, anyways. And um, it will be released uh, when when Zeta Chain hits mainnet. So we're pretty excited about that. It will allow you to, of course, send tokens, stake pools, um, manage your portfolio of assets. And um, um, if you're a developer, you might want to focus on your idea uh, full time, and we have a grants program to enable exactly that. So go to zetachain.com slash grants, learn more how you can apply, uh, how, how do you qualify for a grant? And we're really excited um, for you to, for to, to participate in it. We have a bunch of partners building on top of Zetachain. Um, you can uh, see more on the website, but uh, we're, we're we're pretty pumped about the, the the number of projects that are going to be uh, that are, are already building on on the test that we're are committed to launching uh, with us on mainnet. Uh, we're the globe, so just recently we had an online hackathon hosted by us. We got um, over forty, I think, and um, um, very very substantial prizes. And we, we really want to encourage developers to build on top of Zeta Chain. Just recently, also we had a um, we participated in ETH Global. We had a hackathon on there. Um, three very cool projects um, took the prizes. So yeah, if you're a developer, I um, I, I think you should check out the events. Um, we're going to participate in in some hackathons in September. So keep an eye on Twitter. So yeah, um, uh, if you want to contact related to to developer experience, if you're building on Zeta Chain, uh, please uh, please do so on on Twitter. Um, and if you want to keep uh, an eye on everything um, about Zeta Chain, follow Zeta Blockchain on Twitter. Also, we have very active Discord. Um, so if you, especially if you have a developer question, development related question. Go to Discord GG slash Zeta Chain, and there is a Dev General channel which um, I will probably respond to you pretty quickly if you have uh, any, any kind of question about tutorials. So yeah, um, uh, let us know if if we can improve anything, and we're happy to happy to help. So this was kind of a very very quick short introduction to to Zeta Chain and the main uh, components. Um, I also want to take some time to actually go through um, some of the repositories and the code just to give a, um, a, a deeper dive into. So first of all, we can start with the website. So something I didn't need Starting from, from here would be a good place you can check out and cross-chain messaging, you will decide for yourself which solution is right for you right now. For example, if you uh, are building DeFi for fungible tokens, I would definitely recommend going with omni-chain contracts because that's yeah, a more, um, more up, not up-to-date, but it's, it's a more powerful tool for, for that. And it offers a much um, more simplified developer experience. Uh, allows you to do powerful things with very little code. 
um, if you need to do something with NFTs, for example, on the chain, don't support NFTs yet. It's not an architectural thing. It's we're implementing every feature uh, step by step. So uh, but with cross-chain messaging, you can send any kind of data between chains. So NFT, anything you want. Um, so it, if you want to learn more about Omnichain contracts, we have an overview. And, and this is basically what you need um, to get started, right? It's um, a contract, right? When you're, when you're building an Omnichain contract, uh, you're deploying it only once. So you don't need to deploy it onto many chains. You just deploy it to Zeta chain, and that's it. And the function called TSS address on a source chain like or Polygon or BSC, um, a contract gets called, the one that they specify in the memo. So, and when the contract gets called, this function is executed. So whatever you implement in this function will be executed when user sends tokens to a TSS address. And the tokens that they send become available as DRC20 to the user uh, on this contract. So you can, one example is like the simplest example of what you can do is you can uh, withdraw these tokens back. It doesn't really make sense, but it allows uh, from a practical, but it, it, it lets you see the whole life cycle of a transaction, right? You deposit tokens to Zeta chain by sending them to a TSS address, then you receive them on Zeta in your contract, and then you withdraw them back to the uh, first chain again, right, in the same format. So this is a very uh, simple example with draw tutorial that does exactly that. And, um, and when finished with that, um, I think looking into the swap tutorial would be a good place to go next, um, where you actually swap the token two lines of code. You, uh, you receive the swap for another token, and then you withdraw these tokens to the destination chain. For simple, it probably takes around and uh, be up and running in, in no time. So we have more information on how it works under the hood. So things like system contracts, you can you can see in some examples, like in the swap, you have um, system contract somewhere here. Yeah, um, like what is this? It's just a special contract in data chain that contains uh, addresses relevant that you might want to use in your in your uh, contracts. You can read more about about it here. Might want to use in your in your uh, contracts. You can read more about about it here. And yeah, check out other tutorials. Um, I want to especially um, focus on Bitcoin. Like this is one of the killer features of Zeta Chain that you can easily call contracts from Bitcoin, right? In that you can um, uh, quite easily create wrapped version of Bitcoin on Zeta Chain if that's what you want, or you can mint, you can mint NFTs on Zeta Chain. Um, uh, triggered by Bitcoin transaction, which is pretty neat, right? And it's it's just it's just very simple. You have all the tooling. You can read more about how to do this, how to format the memo. It has to be in a very specific format, but it's uh, pretty easy to do. And we all, also have the tooling. So if you if you are going through a tutorial and you want, just want to check it out, you don't need to implement a bunch of things. You can just use uh, the, the 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 send BTC command that we have. It will format the memo correctly. So yeah, we have a tutorial on Bitcoin as well. It's a very simple miniature tutorial, but lets you understand on a on a simple example how you can uh, call omnichain contracts from Bitcoin, which is, in my opinion, super exciting. So this is we can also implement cross-chain messaging, and it's a bit of, it, a bit more involved, but it lets you do certain things that omnichain contracts don't support yet. Um, right now, you can um, you can transfer native gas tokens here for C20 tokens with Omnichain contracts, but if you need to send arbitrary data right now across chain, transfer native gas tokens here for C20 tokens with Omnichain contracts, but if you need to send arbitrary data right now, cross-chain messaging might be a solution for you. Um, 
it's also fairly simple. You just implement a few functions. So when you are sending data from one chain to another, you're using uh, connector send, uh, an API provided by Zeta chain. You pass some data, like destination chain ID, the data itself, uh, gas, information about gas, these sort of things. And on the destination chain, you implement on Zeta message. And it can you can implement any kind of logic there. So it's just going to be called when a message is successfully processed and passed to your contract. So you can even use connector send to send data back to the original source chain as an acknowledgement that the message was received. So you can build uh, quite quite interesting things with it, and it's very easy to do. That's basically all you need. And um, I'm gonna go into the tooling that we provide for uh, for you to to make it um, to make it even easier. So we have tutorials. Um, uh, for cross-chain messaging, of course. Um, so you can just send a regular text message, so to speak. You can transfer value between chains. Uh, there's a simple counter example where you increment a counter on one chain and it propagates to, to another chain. And of course, an NFT example, which is quite popular as well. You um, you can uh, mint and uh, mint NFT on one chain and send it to another one, and it's it's fairly simple. It's it's quite a lot of code if you look at it on on screen, but I'm gonna go into how we we simplify this uh, in a second. So, if you want to become a validator, if you're a validator, please check out the docs for validators. Um, right now, you just uh, need some testnet tokens, and you can become uh, a validator on Zeta chain and prepare for the mainnet. It's not that much different for regular validators than if you were running um, a validator for any other Cosmos chain. So it's pretty familiar if you if you validate it for any other Cosmos chain, you will be uh, right at home here. But um, we have in-depth documentation on how to how to run a validator. Uh, we're also uh, I encourage you to check out the, the the docs on the blockchain itself. So let me let me just share you show you how how it looks. So basically, on Zeta Chain's GitHub, we have all the all the repos you might be interested in. Um, so we're currently migrating from the Mono repo, so I wouldn't look into that in depth. But um, you can start with the node if, if you're familiar with Cosmos SDK, it's going to be very, very familiar to you. Um, all we have currently four modules focused on cross-chain messaging and implementing on the chain contracts for it. So um, if you want a more high-level overview, you can look in, in the docs and we have um, quite a bit of uh, info on, on how these modules work, what kind of messages they support and um and, and everything so it's it's not necessary for you to know as a dev developer you absolutely do not need to know how it works under the hood but if you if you want to contribute to the blockchain if you're a cosmos sdk developer like if you if you're familiar with this uh, if, for, with this framework um it could be a good good place to understand better how cross-chain transactions are processed and um, in really how it works under the hood. And of course, I can't skip the, the tool section, which contains all you need as a developer, starting from uh, RPC endpoints to all the addresses on all the chains. Uh, so um, if you need this address, if you're, uh, of course, you can pull this, pull this dynamically from the library, and I'm going to go into that later, but um, you can also have access to all these values here. We have bug bounty program. You can check check it out. So, as for wallets, Zeta Chain uh, supports different kinds of wallets because it's a it's an interoperability solution. So you 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 might need to use the wallet that um, that that um, 
uh, is relevant to the chains that you're working with. So for example, if you're, as a user, if you're sending value from Ethereum, you could use something like, you can use something like MetaMask or a Coinbase wallet. If you're using Bitcoin, you might check out XDeFi, which is um, one of the wallets that supports uh, Zeta chain, of course, more, more wallets support uh, Zeta chain. Um, they just basically need to implement um, memo in the correct format. They, they need to allow users to format a memo properly. And many wallets do this. And many wallets do this these days. You can also use, which is kind of interesting because it changes the Cosmos chain. Like Kepler, for example, to, um, to send tokens, uh, to stake delegates, or even transactions for EVM. So EVM support is implemented um, thanks to the Ethermint module. So it's Cosmos SDK module that implements EVM support. And um, you can use Kepler to sign transactions for EVM. But of course, primarily, like if you're um, moving assets or calling omni-chain contracts from, uh, from EVM chains like Polygon, DSC or Ethereum, then uh, MetaMask is probably a good choice. So we have a faucet. So of course, if you're a developer, you need tokens to, to test the functionality. There are many ways you can get data tokens. One is just directly request from a faucet. You can also, which is often overlooked, you can go to, um, to an AMM like Uniswap and you can swap native uh, testnet um, well, um, Gs uh, for Zeta. So there are pools on all the connect chains. You get uh, Zeta chain tokens this way. If you have Gs, you can swap it for Zeta and then move Zeta to Zeta chain and um, check out this document that covers this in detail, how, how you use this uh, functionality. I encourage you to use the faucet if you're just starting because that's the simplest uh, path. So beyond the node, like if you if you want to get started, we have a template that implements pretty much everything you need as a developer. Uh, so we can uh, we can get get started. Let's move the template. So you type git clone data chain templates. Straightforward. Just type yarn to install dependencies. It doesn't have much, but it has a, it imports a bunch of useful features um, in the form of uh, hard hat tasks. So if you check out the hard hat config, you'll see that we're importing some things from um, from our effort running yarn to install dependencies. You can run the X hard hat, and you will see all yarn to install dependencies. You can run the X hard hat, and you will see all the all the functions that we have. So you can create an account, pray for balances, uh, track cross chain transactions, which is very useful. Um, check out balances. And it will query all the chains for the balances. We don't have much here, but uh, we can use faucet um, to get some tokens. So it's asking you to authenticate with GitHub, which is trying to combat spam. It requests tokens for you. So it's very straightforward, right? You create an account, um, request some tokens, check the balances right here and there. So get a your BTC address, uh, very useful if you're querying, um, if you're interacting with Bitcoin, if you're building something on top of that. Let's see, it might take a while for Fawcett to react, so, uh, but no, we actually got 10, 10 Zeta chain, chain tokens uh, right now. And you can request uh, tokens on, on other chains as well. So so that's, that's pretty useful. Um, but I think one of the coolest things is um, 
you can it, we have two templating commands that let's you uh, just get a proper contract in one command. So we typed npx star hat omni chain and then provided a name, in this case my contract. What it did is it actually created a new contract, an omni chain contract. So that's super helpful because you don't need to memorize or copy and paste it from documentation. We already have it um, here and you can just implement all the logic. So many tutorials are, are built on top of that. So you just type one command, get all the code you need, and then kind of modify there to to implement the logic. And also gives you helpful tasks to deploy the contract, which is fairly standard, to interact with the contract. So um, let's say uh, let's say we want to stash all the changes, and uh, you kind of go back to the starting point, right? Path. contract and uh, let's say it, it needs um, uh, a f so basically what, I, what it so when a user sends tokens on ethereum for example to state all the uh, values for the arguments for the contract so let's say we have an argument called foo and it's going to be an address and bar uh, which is going to be uint like this and now we have a contract that to compile the contract and uh on time so we're deploying and it's done right so we just run one command to create it doesn't do anything uh but it, it's 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 a problem use the interact task to um to send uh to basically call it uh, chain that supports uh, that Zeta chain supports, which is currently Ethereum, uh, BSC, Polygon, and Bitcoin. So we can even check it out on the Explorer, and we see that there's a contract here. You know, try verifying it. And we verify the contracts. You can see it's very, very straightforward. After running just a few commands, we we have created an account, some tokens from the faucet, checked the balance, created a new on chain contract, executed the deploy function, deploy task on on Zeta Scan, and then verify the contract. So this is. I recommend going back to if you want to learn on top of cross-chain messaging, of course, we have a solution for you as well. Um, and that's NPX hard hat messaging. So if you type messaging contract for deploying and for interacting, very straightforward. But for deploying, it's it's a bit different because with cross-chain messaging, what you need to specify all the networks you want to deploy your contract to. Let's say uh, uh, Gurley and uh, BSC test that, and this task will loop through all the networks, deploy the contracts to all of them, and then say, set something to the check. So the contracts needs to know what is the counterparty contract address, and this deploy task just does the check out and deploy task, but you don't need to modify it, it works out of the box. Just run deploy, make sure to specify, and uh, and it will be deployed as well to call the contract. So, so yeah, you can uh, of what Zeta Chain is, how simple it is to 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 get started building. It's literally just cloning a template, install can just implement your application specific functionality. Um, don't need to do anything more than that to get started. Uh, so going back to the org, so we have the template which we just cloned and used. Um, 
good starting point for all the developers. If you want to dig deeper into how Zeta Chain works beyond the node, you can also check out the protocol contracts repo. So basically, the, the Zeta Chain is composed of three big um, parts. Um, parts. One is the Cosmos SDK blockchain in the node repo. So that's the network. It compiles into single binary all validators from the same binary, and it, it, it makes sure it, it implements all the all the features of the of the blockchain node. Right. Then we have Zeta client run on Zeta chain and on connect, uh, connected chains. So if you go to protocol contracts repo, you will see contracts directory and EVM contains all the contracts running on connected chains, so on EVM chains. Um, and ZEVM is what we call all the chains, right? These we can see the system contract in the swap tutorial go to protocol contract. For example, the example we see that it's inheriting from uh, Z contract. What is Z contract? You can go here in the interfaces and learn that Z contract right now, it's basically just implement this function. So very useful for, for having a deeper understanding. And of course, all the contracts, all the example contracts are available as well. If you are stuck for some reason, or if you want to, um, if you want to start from, from, uh, from the code already written for you, you can go to, um, to a relevant directory like messaging and uh, warriors and just then go to um, to a relevant directory like messaging and uh, warriors and just uh, build the con uh, build the project from here and you will get a fully functioning nft uh, project for that lets you send nfts from one chain to another so you can just clone that and uh, get up and running even faster. So I think that pretty much covers everything about Zeta Chain. I mean, of course, there's so much more, but um, I wanted to provide a very high-level overview and um, and give you the the tooling to get started. So again, all the tutorials are just cloning the template, installing dependencies, running a command to generate all the code for you. All the tutorials are just cloning the template, installing dependencies, running a command to generate all the code for you, and then kind of modifying it for, for your specific needs. So um, I guess the last thing I can mention is, is the labs. What I, it, again, Zeta Chain is not purely for swapping, right? It's a much more general purpose tool, right? It, it lets you send any kind of data, so it's a it's a foundational kind of um, EVM chains and, uh, and 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 chains that don't support smart contracts such as Bitcoin, and and go from there. So you can just um, swap around, see see how it works. Um, this current from there. So you can just um, swap around, see see how it works. Um, this currently works on 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 the testnet, of course. Um, so yeah, there are many people swapping. So if if if, if, process, if the process doesn't complete right away, it's just because tens of thousands of people are constantly swapping and checking it out. Uh, so um, be aware of that. So I think that's pretty much it. I think we can move on to. Uh, questions. I provided a good um, intro to what Zeta Chain is, and kind of um, you can find something uh, for yourself uh, for sure. So yeah, thank, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks, Fadi. Uh, Dennis, this is a great uh, uh, sharing, and uh, we for sure have some for you and uh, please uh, answer uh, <clears throat> the first question is uh, I know uh, is uh, one blockchain uh, 
my is how the other chain can operating mechanism in per uh, contact contract mode. So I apologize because I didn't hear everything, though the internet connection seems a bit off. Like if you can repeat the last bit, that would be great. Okay, okay. <clears throat> okay, I repeat again. Um, or you can send or you can send it in chat as well. I can read it in chat if you have it written. Uh sorry. Yeah, I tap it. Uh, hello? Recording in progress. Uh, hello, hello, hello. Uh, I, I already oh. have it. Uh... Oh, I don't have a question in chat. No. no. Yes, I can see it now. Oh, okay. So, how is data chain's performance and scalability? How large scale data chain validators and um, the 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 fact that it's built on top of Cosmos that allows it to process thousands i think the 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 not the limit but um five to ten thousand transactions per second so it's quite a quite a quite a high throughput um for for the uh for the focused on interoperability like that should be sufficient um it might take for a transaction to process uh, for a transaction to be processed, it might take um, sometimes it takes just 15 seconds, sometimes it takes up to a minute for a transaction to be processed. It, the process depends on uh, on congestion of the network, how many transactions are being sent one chain to another. You can the explore. It takes a bit more time for a have at least six confirmations before it gets processed, but that's just the nature of um, of the Bitcoin Bitcoin network. So it should in in the uh, if a transaction to ensure that even I loads are our process successfully. So text proposals so if you're familiar with with any other copy you're the on-chain and it's very active by the way well by using governance so you can see it to Thank you. 